Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host on the website that teaches you how to play guitar and mandolin. This week it's banjo. We're starting a little series on the entertainer. I think it makes a pretty good uh, bluegrass piece. Uh, but it's one of the first ones that I remember learning as a kid on piano, and I've loved it ever since. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to my website, BanjoBenClark.com. You can join as a Gold Pick member, have access to hundreds of videos and tabs and MP3s just like this one. For this particular lesson, it's about a 30-minute video lesson. I'm going to teach you how to play that solo, which has got a lot of cool single string, inside rolls, and melodic stuff, but also how to play the backup if you can talk somebody into playing the mandolin and guitar part for you. Okay, so we're going we got the tabs for that, video for that, and then also I have MP3s that you can download to practice along with, with the banjo and without at different speeds. I'd be honored to have you on board. Let's jump into this first measure of the Entertainer on Banjo. Let's learn the Entertainer on Banjo in the key of C. This is a lot of fun to play. This is my own arrangement. It's not exactly like the piano arrangement. We're going to do the first two parts. We're not going to go into that key change. Um, but this one's a little interesting and maybe a little challenging for a couple different reasons. One, we're in the key of C. We're not going to use a capo, so it's out of our normal patterns that we're used to playing in the key of G. Also, we've got some inside rolls happening. And then we have some single string stuff that we're going to work on. And it's kind of some funky counting here, so you'll have to stay on your toes with that. Now let's throw up the first line of tab there. You'll notice that I have our pick hand fingerings um, label beneath each one of the notes. T is for thumb, one is for index, two is for middle. And I've written this little intro out like you're the only one playing it, okay? Now if you have a guitar and mandolin with you, you could do it like I did in the video. But I'm going to have the banjo play all three of these little licks. Okay, and we're going to do some single string stuff there. We're going to come up to the 12th fret on the first string and play 12, 14 with our thumb and index, 13, land on that 10, and that's a quarter note, so you'll stay there for a little while. And then play 12, 12, 12, 12. So it sounds like this. Then we're going to do it again in measure two because we, we don't have three octaves on the banjo like the other two instruments do. And then measure three, we're going to jump down and play almost all the same notes an octave lower using our open D string. And then we're going to go first fret, second fret, and then we'll walk chromatically down to the G note in measure four. When we play that first note in measure four, cut it off because that's kind of what the piano does. It's kind of staccato. Then we're going to jump up to the eighth fret of the second string, play that, and slide off of it. Then we'll go into our A part there, okay? Now, I'll play all this for you slowly in a minute. Whenever we go into this A part, it's going to have that little pickup on the last beat of measure four, and we're going to get into some single string stuff right off the bat. So you'll play on that last beat of measure four, the open D string, and then with your index finger, reach down and grab the first fret of it, hammer on into the first beat of measure five, and then I'm going to go up and grab my first fret of the second string and play that with my middle finger. So it sounds like this. And whenever I play that first fret up there, I'm going to release my middle finger and not have those uh, strings resonating. I'm trying to mimic what the piano does. And that's syncopated, so you'll want to count it. Four and one and two and three and four and. So let me play measures one through five for you. If this isn't slow enough for you, remember I, I have a whole other video segment where I play the whole song for you very slowly. hold that note over through the first three beats of measure six. Just hold it there. I think maybe in the video I kind of choked it a little bit. And then we're going to jump up for a little melodic lick in a position that we're going to be in a lot. I want you to put your middle finger on the fifth fret of the G string, third string. Beneath it, place your ring finger on the fifth fret of the second string. Okay, and so on the fourth beat of measure six, we're going to play and then we're going to do this little backwards roll, measure seven. Lift everything to a forward roll. And then land on that C double stop down here, measure eight. Quarter note, forward roll. 
And then on the last beat of measure eight, we'll go back into that lick that we just learned, measure five. Same thing, measure nine. But then here, on measure nine, you can uh, make a note on that last note of measure nine to leave that down. We're gonna leave it down for uh, the next couple measures. And in measure 10, instead of letting it just hang out, we're going to throw in some rolls that follow the chord changes. So do a partial F chord, three, two, you've already got your index finger down. Forward roll, this is an inside roll. Go back to the C chord. And then the last two notes of measure 10 are little single string notes. Two, open, I still got my index finger down. So let me play um, measure six through 10. I'll start on that pickup at the end of measure six. Still got my index finger down, so we go into measure 11. We're going to do this big D7 shape. So I'm going to reach for my pinky and grab the fourth fret, second fret with my middle finger. We do an inside forward roll. Lift. This is your chance to lift everything actually and play that low D string. Come back up to our position here. <laughs> 